Winifred Goldring, a paleontologist most famous for her work on crinoids, or the weirdest plant-looking animal of the Devonian. She also did work crafting and managing exhibits at the New York State Museum. She was the state paleontologist of New York and the first female president of the Paleontological Society. She used to ride in a sidecar on the way to field sites, but my favorite part of Winifred's life is the story of her pants. Her pants. Now, in some cultures, women have been wearing pants for centuries, but in the colonized U.S., women wearing pants wasn't common until the 40s or 50s. Up until then, it was all long skirts or long dresses. You might wear pants if you're doing a physical activity like playing tennis or riding a bicycle, but that was a rare exception. The whole pants thing wasn't just about fashion, though. Keeping women from wearing pants was another way of keeping them from being involved in science. Winifred, like a lot of the women in this exhibit, faced discrimination because she was a woman. She was paid less than her male counterparts at the museum, which caused her to quit her job for a short while. She would encourage other women to pursue botany and zoology over paleontology, because at least in those fields they could get paid better. She was told that if she wanted to be involved in science, she had to stick to the laboratory or the museum, where she could wear a long skirt or dress. And there are examples of women going out in the field in long, bulky skirts, but it was an inconvenience. It wasn't until the women's rights movement of the 60s and 70s that seeing a woman wearing pants became normal. And that coincided with women advocating to get equal pay. All right, back to Winifred Goldring in her pants. Winifred was a paleontologist down to her bones. There was no way that she was gonna miss out on fieldwork. So she sat down and she crafted herself a pair of pants. And not only that, she made pants for another woman paleontologist, Carlotta Mari, who did her fieldwork down in the Dominican Republic. Fieldwork's when a scientist goes outside and does their research in the wild. Biologists also do fieldwork, but they study living things. Now, when you picture a paleontologist in your head, you might imagine someone who looks like this. And that's what most paleontologists look like in the United States for a big chunk of history. But today, a paleontologist can look like anybody. There's no set race, religion, class, ability that a paleontologist has to be. And if you're interested in learning more about identity and how it relates to paleontology, you can watch this video I made about Tilly Ebinger. As I said, a paleontologist can look like anybody. However, there is a universal outfit that almost all scientists will wear when they go and do field work. Pants or shorts, a top, maybe an extra layer like a fleece or raincoat, hiking boots and thick socks, sunglasses and a hat. I know, it's basically just hiking gear, but that's the point. You want clothes that you can go climbing in, that you can go digging, that you can get dirty, that you can move around in. But that's not the only stuff that a paleontologist might bring with them when they go out into the field. Scientists might also bring a notebook and pens and pencils to take down information or draw what they're uncovering, as well as cameras and measuring tools. Also so many different tools that scientists can use to uncover fossils. Oh yeah? Name four of them. Okay. Shovels, pickaxes, rock hammers, jackhammers, tweezers, brushes. Wait, that was six things. Paleontologists also need water and sunscreen since they're working in the sun a lot. Sometimes they need gloves and hard hats for protection. And in order to bring their specimens back to the laboratory or the museum, they might also wrap them in toilet paper or make plastic bandages to protect them or store them in plastic bags. A backpack can be useful to carry all your fossils and gear. And of course you need a way to get to your field site where you're doing your research be it a car, a horse, or a helicopter. And depending on where you are, you might need very specific gear. Like Helen James did her research in caves, so she also needed climbing gear. The most important thing about fieldwork clothes is that they're comfortable, you can move around in them, and you're not afraid to get them dirty. You could even wear a dress when you're doing fieldwork, but the important thing is that that would be up to you. It's your choice. No one would be making you. And pants are always an option. And if you want to do fieldwork in your yard or your neighborhood, I recommend bringing some paper and pencils to take notes. But for me, I'm going to go put on some pants in honor of Winifred Goldring.